Now in verse 20, blessed are you. The term blessed has gone through various meanings over the years, <laughs> and it's really gotten twisted out of shape by now. The original Greek usage of the word blessed means happiness in God, uh, happiness of the gods, because that was a Greek way of saying it. Later, the word blessed came to mean any positive condition that a person would experience. Greek authors drew happiness from earthly goods and values. And this is much of what Americanized Christianity thinks of when it thinks of the word blessed. I mean, um, give me what I consider to be positive and that will make me feel good. And I'll call that a blessing is what we have done with this word. If we are not of this world and if blessing is mostly perceived of being material and worldly gain, then what truly is blessing if it is of God and not of this earth? I really started wondering about that. Blessing is not from here. It's from up there. In the Old Testament, the authors recognized that the truly blessed and happy person was one who trusts God, who hopes and waits for Him, and who fears and loves Him. I need to say that again. <laughs> say the people taking notes. <laughs> Bless you all. <laughs> In the Old Testament, the authors recognized that the truly blessed and happy person was one who trusts God. How about that in simplicity? One who trusts God, who hopes and waits for Him, and who fears and loves Him. America thinks that blessing equates to getting money, not God. And they hope and wait for money, not God. Their happiness is in money and not God. Right now, the world is trying to redefine marriage, and many of us are outright against it. But I think the word blessing got redefined a long time ago. And even those who are against the redefining of the word marriage are clinging to a redefined version of the word blessing, and they probably don't even know they're doing it. To understand the Beatitudes, I think we need to understand the biblical definition of blessing. If I'm going to believe that marriage is between man and a woman, then it stands to reason that I have to believe what the Bible also says about the word blessing too. Blessing today has been turned into a very sinful and selfish motive because its meaning has been altered. We are altering God's terminologies nowadays to fit our selfishness and our sin. I've been able to determine how a prosperity message of blessing is out of line from the Word of God ever since I went as a missionary to the Kuna Indians. Uh, when you step onto their island, it's like you step back 500 years. They have nothing. Um, they live in huts made of leaves and branches. They, they don't have the stuff we have. They just don't have it. If the gospel you believe in is the one that says you can call on God to get more money, a new car, and a bigger house, then that's not the real gospel because the same gospel won't work over there among the Kunas. They can't get those things there that we have here. There is no wealth for them to have. There are no bigger houses, and there are certainly no cars where they live. If the gospel you believe in does not work in every location, in every point in history, for every type of person, of every language, in every country, and in every culture, then it is not the gospel of Jesus. It works everywhere. The gospel of Jesus is powerful to work for all mankind in every nook and cranny of humanity's existence, everywhere. The Bible says that Jesus died for all, not just for those who claim your certain style of society. So then, we're, we're required to define blessing. What is blessing? The most used Hebrew word for blessing is barak, which means to praise. Another Hebrew word is, uh, for blessing is esher, and I hope I'm saying it right to any uh, Hebrew-speaking people. I, I've never studied Hebrew, so bear with me. Um, it's esher, which means happiness. Now, Job 5.17 says, blessed is the man whom God corrects. And the New King James says, happy is the man whom God corrects. Same definition. Blessed means happy. Happy. I want to show you Psalm 1 and 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, there's your happiness, is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. 
Someone who is truly blessed is someone who is happy in the law of the Lord, who is happy in God. That's truly blessed. I know people with tons of money, they ain't happy for nothing because they just want more money. That's not blessed. We got to get back to the biblical definition of blessing. I know people who do not obey God, they don't serve Him, they won't pray, they don't study His Word. Their blessing is in money, something that not all people in this world can get. And when they have a lot of money, they say, I'm truly blessed. Oh, I'm so truly blessed. I have all this money. God gave me a new car, I'm blessed. Oh, goodness. God gave me a new job, I'm blessed. A life of blessing is for those who love and fear God and order their lives according to His Word. That is the biblical definition of blessing. God can bless through money. Sure, He can. Can God bless through a new job? Sure, He can. But He blesses those who are happy by not walking in the counsel of the ungodly, who don't stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but their delight is not in money itself, but is in the law of the Lord. If your delight is in money, but not in the law of the Lord, then what you're getting is not blessing. It's deception. You're being tricked. You're fooled. Blessing is always connected to the knowledge that God is at work to direct us in the right path of righteousness. This produces His happiness. Knowing that God is at work in us to guide us in His will, that's blessing. And oftentimes it means losing money. I had a friend who lost a big job contract. He was trying to work a big job contract. And he found out later, um, the reason he didn't get the contract, he found out later all his insurances for construction work were not in place properly. He lost the whole contract. Had he gotten the contract, he would have been in big trouble. He would have gotten himself in a pretty big snag. And so he considered that a blessing, that he lost something. He lost a contract. He lost money. But it was a blessing. God was directing him the right way. He considered it a blessing. God was directing him. God was keeping him from something that would have hurt him. So in Luke 6, the, De- the Beatitudes describe the happy state of those who find their purpose, their fulfillment, and joy in their service to God. Service to God. Ugh. I don't want to do any work. Just give me the goods, man. Let me live a... I, I don't want to be rich. I just want to be comfortable. Bless me, Lord. And all the while, they won't serve. They won't obey. They don't acknowledge their, that God is their provider and their guide. You know, the Kuna Indians, they had virtually no money at all, no cars, no house, no promotion, and they were so happy. It was, it was amazing. They didn't know anything outside of their little island. They didn't realize the world was any different. They thought it was all like that to them. They were happy people. I'm like, why can't we be happy like that here? No air conditioning for a week. We went down there thinking, we're from Houston. We can hack this. Oh, goodness. My first sermon I ever taught was in front of 300 people in a Kuna hut with no breeze blowing through it because bamboo sticks doesn't let a lot of air through. I mean, it was like... It was like wet t-shirt contest for me. I, I felt very out of place. And these kids and all these people were sitting there, not a sweat, not a drop of sweat on them at all, probably looking at me half going, what is wrong with this guy? Anyway, they were happy. It was, it was a good time. I learned a lot from them. Um, we got to get our priorities biblically aligned. We got to realize that we strive for reward in heaven. The way this nation's headed... It's looking as though God is about to teach us what true biblical blessing is by taking all our fancy stuff away from us. People are taking their delight, not in God's law, but in how much stuff they got. America, if you're all hung up over the redefinition of marriage, I want to point out we've already redefined the word blessing a long time ago, and we need to get back to its true meaning. Those who are of the world down here, they just don't get it. They... They hate us or they think we're stupid for obeying and serving the Lord. But that's how we are blessed. That's how we're blessed. That's how we are happy. They're blessed and happy, supposedly, a different way. We're not blessed like them and we're not happy like them. So they look at us and they go, you don't make any sense, man. Jesus said jump for joy when they do these kind of things to you. 
You're not blessed when you get more stuff. Jesus said, blessed are you poor, hungry, weeping, hated people. When others do that stuff to you because of me. Rejoice and leap for joy. For that means for real, your reward is up there in heaven, not down here. When I made the switch to come to full-time ministry, I told my friends, man, I am done investing down here. I'm done. Every investment I ever tried to do of any type down here blew up, and I lost. I lost so much stuff. I said, I'm just done. Investing down here, there's no return on it. Rates are low. Market crashes eat up all your good gains anyway. In heaven, there's always a good return. And so it's there in the law of God and in service to Him, knowing that He's guiding and providing me that I delight in. That is blessing. Those of you who put blessing in your money, man, it's like you're, it's like you're polishing dung. How many of you found a nice pile of dung and got the, got the wax and the, and the polish cloth, went out there and just cleaned it up? Oh, look at this. That's so nice. You're polishing dung. If you lose your job, you're still blessed. If you get an incurable disease, I have one, you're still blessed. If you lose everything you own, I've had that happen to me before, you're still blessed if you're serving Jesus. No thieves can break in and steal anything that you've accrued in heaven, right? Jesus was trying to tell the disciples that by following him, they're going to be poor, they're going to hunger, they're going to weep, and men are going to hate them because of Jesus. And the same goes for those of us who truly believe on him because what follows is that we will be vindicated for our faith. So live blessed. I hope this is getting through. 